Wow, it's summer. <laughs> Happy summer, campers. Good to Happy be summer. back with you. Yeah. So what's been going on? Well, it's been hot, right? And we're hopeful that wherever you live in the state of California, you are safe, um, trying to stay hydrated and cool. Your bees are doing all right. Um, and uh, we'd like to give a shout out to all the first responders, all the firefighters who are on the front lines, keeping us safe. And please, as a reminder, just know that Hives for Heroes, we have a partnership, we're affiliated with them. And if you know of any firefighters, first responders, or veterans who are interested in becoming an apprentice level beekeeper, or just even taking uh, the honeybee ambassador level, please know that Hives for Heroes will reimburse them. So yeah, it's a great reminder. Pass it around. So yeah, Kieran, please do. What do we got going on? We've got a lot to talk about today. Uh, a lot of fun topics. We have a few more classes coming up for this year and uh, Bee Health Hub updates. So let's get into it. Yeah. So a reminder about the class passes, which were introduced this year, actually. If you'd like full access to all the remote classes that the California Master Beekeeper Program offers and their recordings, we highly suggest you look into the class passes. You can learn about them on our website if you'd like to learn more, but you get access to all the classes in the level that you have the class pass for. And the best way to get a class pass is to register for that level of the certification program. So if you register for the apprentice level, for example, you get access to all of the classes at the apprentice level and below. So the recordings and the remote classes. It's a great way that you can uh, just learn about anything you're interested in because you get access to all the classes. You don't have to pick and choose. You can watch everything at any time you'd like. And also this year, another change, a reminder for everyone that we've extended the certification deadlines. So this hopefully makes it a little bit easier. Uh, you don't have to be on such a tight schedule so that you have one and a half years now for apprentice and one and a half years for journey from the time that you register to the time that you have to take the exam and pass. And if anything does come up, we always also consider exceptions. So reach out to us in our weekly office hours if you're in the certification program and you need more time than this. And Bee Health Hub update. So this year, a new program at UC Davis was launched called the Bee Health Hub. We've talked about it in the last few newsletters. It's very exciting because they are providing services to commercial beekeepers and hobbyist beekeepers in terms of consulting and doing pests and disease testing at the lab. Um, so it's really UC Davis providing some additional services to California beekeepers. And a few updates that they've provided for us here, they're gearing up for some miticide studies. They're also getting trained in varroa sensitive hygiene assays. And they're continuing to process the Verimorpha, which used to be called Nosema, samples and monitoring visits for commercial operations. And you can see them getting trained at the bottom left here and also a mudicide trial at the bottom right. Um, so they're making some great progress to expand the accessibility of uh, passive disease testing in California. And if you'd like to learn more about them or send a sample to be tested, check out B Health Hub. Uh, so just Google B Health Hub or it's also linked on the camp website. Yeah, thanks, Kion. And part of that, is inviting you, our valuable members, to maybe help us choose a logo for the Bee Health Hub. So Kian's gonna pop a survey in the newsletter and we'd love your feedback. What to you defines Bee Health in a simple picture? Yeah, those yeah. are the pictures. We'd love your feedback. Yeah, thank you. We'll also drop it in the description of this YouTube video so you can find it everywhere. Yeah. Yes, and classes. We've got some great ones coming up. Always the best way to find out when and where, just go to the website under classes, right? But to give you a bit of an idea as to what we've got coming down the pike for next year, 
we're looking to perhaps expand on our instrumental insemination services that we offer in terms of classes and just simply offering. So Kion will also put a link to a survey that we really love for you to fill out just so we can do our due diligence to find out if this is truly something that is wanted by you, the beekeepers in the state of California. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. And there aren't that many instrumental insemination classes mm -hmm. offered in California. And so it's a great opportunity if you are interested, as Wendy mentioned, this would be a great chance to share with us what you would like to learn and um, help us um, mm -hmm. design it so that it's actually useful for all different levels. Yes, thank you. Yeah, and then of course, in our events corner, we've got info sessions, orientation, we've always got the office hours and the annual certification celebration. Will be rather kind of hybrid, but uh, Boots on the Ground will be happening in Davis at B Bio from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. We'll have a food truck. We'll have some events there. We'll do some celebrating of our candidates. So if you're local or within driving distance to Davis, um, might want to pencil that into your calendar. Of course, we love to see you during office hours. And if you know of somebody who is interested in getting certified with the camp, our next online info session live will be January the 8th, 2025. Can I actually believe I'm saying 2025 at this point? And our next orientation uh, about the camp live online will be on the 22nd of January. So um, thanks for spreading the word. Yeah, and we just had uh, an info session and we're about to have an orientation as well. We had a great showing. Thank you for everyone who came to the most recent info session. We don't have to wait until 2025 for the next <laughs> one. Um, as Wendy mentioned, you could watch the recording. Yeah. So feel free to go on our website and under certifications, you can click on the most recent recording. For sure. Yeah. And yeah, we have great events corner here. So just a there's not too many in-person and hybrid classes left this year. Actually, there's none, I should say. Uh, but we do have a good number of remote classes still available. And so make sure to check the classes and the class schedule uh, on the website. Also, class passes we talked about. That's a great opportunity. Class schedules on the website and video library, which is also under classes on the website. If you'd like to watch the previous recordings, that is also available. So classes this summer. We just have one that is still left that is online for this summer. There's more later in the year. And that is a fun class by Jean-Philippe Morelli. And that is Meloponini stingless bees. So if you want to learn about stingless bees in general, or more specifically Meloponini bees, um, be sure to check out that class. Uh, Jean-Philippe is great because he actually has spent a lot of time in Brazil. He has his own uh, Meloponary there. And so he grew up, he has his own, manages his own bees in Brazil. And also part of this class is you get sent some samples of stingless bee honey to taste directly. The from best, Philippe. the best. Yeah, mm. it's a great flavor. It's unique and it would be great to try. And uh, so this class is special in that to cover the costs of shipping, uh, we have that not included under the class passes if you'd like to get a sample to taste. If you'd not like to take the sample, you still just like to take the class, reach out to us, we can arrange that as well um, under the class pass. So check this out. We also have a recording from last year. Jean-Philippe did a class similar to this one. Um, you can watch that one if you'd like to learn about stainless bees as well. Uh, but this is a great opportunity to learn not just about honey uh, bees that are in California, like the Apis mellifera, but all the other types of honeybees in the world. Yeah, and another opportunity to gather is the annual conference, the CSBA, and this year it's happening in Reno at the Grand Sierra Resort. So if you want to get together between November 19 and 21, if you're in the Reno area, please pop by and see us. The camp, of course, as always, will have a table. We'll also be tabling alongside uh, the Bee Health Hub, so you get to meet some of the folks from 
that crew. And um, if you're in uh, Southern California, Saturday, September the 21st, UCR, uh, that's um, uh, at Riverside, is hosting the Cyber Bee Health Conference. I believe it's the third year they've done this, and they really get a great turnout. I know Kian and I are planning to be there, and we would love to get together for dinner with anybody who is interested in showing up for that conference. Uh, we've popped the links to register in the newsletter. So hopefully we'll see you there. Great, and now we will dive into an interview from the founder of Swarmed, a new website. Hello, Mateo, and thank you for interviewing with the California Master Beekeeper Program and sharing the great work you have done on Swarmed, the new website. And first, I'd like to acknowledge that Mateo has gone through the California Master Beekeeper Program the fastest of anyone else. So he is now a Master Capstone Certificate with us. And um, it's exciting to work with you because this Master Capstone that you completed was this project that you're sharing now. So if anybody would like to learn more about this uh, swarmed website that we're talking about today, make sure to watch that capstone video on our website. So with that, welcome Mateo. Thank you for being with us. Hey Ken, thanks for having me. Yeah, so I started Swarmed last spring and it's evolved into my Master Beekeeper capstone project. And Swarmed is a website for the public to report bee swarms and then for beekeepers to claim them essentially in real time. Since the website, when a swarm is reported, uh, automatically notifies the nearest beekeepers who then get a text or an email and are able to claim the swarm. And the first, bee the first beekeeper to claim the swarm uh, gets the address, gets the contact details and is able to respond quickly. Uh, and what the system does is it makes the whole process of reporting a swarm, hearing about a swarm, responding to a swarm faster more private and easier for, for beekeepers to manage and easier for the public to do. Awesome. So you're telling me if I'm a member of the public, I see a massive swarm outside and I want to get a beekeeper to come help me catch it. It's in my backyard, in my doghouse. Um, instead of just Googling, uh, find a beekeeper to catch a swarm and going through all these different websites, you're saying there's one central place now that I can go, one website that connects all the beekeepers to the public. Is that the service? Yeah, exactly. And so this is working across the country every day. Uh, there are thousands of beekeepers signed up. And what the public does is they, right, I think you can all imagine you see a bee swarm land in your house, your car, in your garden. And the first thing you do is you Google it. What do I do? There's a bee swarm. And so it is uh, for people, they find, they find the website, they fill out a quick form, um, how high up are the bees? Where are they located? Submit a picture. All the kinds of things that the beekeeper wants to know before committing to, to go pick up some bees is what the public fills out when they fill out a report. And then that report goes out to the beekeepers in the area so that only the people nearest to the swarm are hearing about it. Um, so only those people who, who would be able to come get it um, are able to pick up that swarm. And so what that means is that pretty frequently within 15, 20 minutes, a swarm is claimed and the beekeeper is on the way. And so this works really, really quickly for the public and gives beekeepers all the information they need to make a choice about uh, whether that swarm is something that they want to pick up or that they're able to pick up. That's great. Do you partner with any local organizations or clubs to um, help them basically have this service on their website or something similar so that their local members and anyone who reaches out to them can use this one service to uh, find beekeepers to help catch swarms? Yeah, so originally when I built this service, I was thinking about myself as a hobby beekeeper and I, I spent my spring uh, crawling through Facebook page, pages and keeping on my local next door page, waiting for someone to post about a swarm, um, and realized that, that that system isn't working well, and realized that a lot of associations swarm lists aren't working well. Uh, the kind of the old system of having a dozen phone numbers or fifty phone numbers on your website and having the public find your local association, right? They Google their location bee swarm and then they see the local association and that's how most people find out about, about a beekeeper in the area. Right? And for a lot of people, it was the first time they ever thought about a beekeeper in their area. Maybe I never thought about this. And they find their association and they find a long list of phone numbers. And what that usually means then is you're dialing your way uh, through that list of phone numbers until someone picks up. If they pick up, you're answering the same questions over and over again. 
right? How high up are the bees? What does it look like? Can you send a picture? Answering those same questions, only to maybe hear from a beekeeper say, well, I'm, I'm, I'm busy right now. I, can, I can't make it this minute. Um, and for the beekeepers, this, also, this means putting your phone number in public on a website. And I hear from so many beekeepers that they get so that they either pulled out of their swarm, their, their association swarm list, um, or seldom respond to phone calls because they get so many spam phone calls by putting their phone number so publicly on the, on the internet. Um, and another component here is that there's the, there's the potential to collect some really interesting data, and, and I'm happy to talk about that later as well. Um, but what this means for associations, and I, and I partner now with dozens of associations from Hawaii to New Hampshire at this point, um, is they, they sign up and we either put together a custom solution or they host uh, swarms, bee swarm reporting form on their website. And essentially what they do is they're making, they're putting a window on their website into the swarm system. And so someone can go directly onto their website, fill out the form, report honeybees, and then those bees are fed into the system and sent to nearby beekeepers. And some associations want to come up, we've, we've built various custom solutions at this point, uh, things like restricting swarms to just their members or um, having access to the data from the swarms. So some associations see hundreds of swarms come in every season and they want to know where are those swarms coming in, where are, um, what time of year are they coming in, right? It, what, what are the main yearly periods when swarms are coming in? And, and so they're getting all that data that otherwise with a traditional swarm list is getting lost. They're also able to keep an eye on who's collecting most of the swarms um, and are the swarm collection, are those swarm collections successful? And so there's all these interesting things that they were able to keep, tr keep track of while making that system easier for associations to manage and, and easier for the public to interact with. Okay, that's great. I mean, it sounds like a win, 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 win. It this this <laughs> I hope this so. system, yeah, because it, it makes it easier for everyone. It makes it easier for the beekeepers to uh, provide, say, if they're available and what they the distance of the beekeeper that they're available for uh, to catch swarms. And then the public, they only have to publish online, like you mentioned, only one time instead of calling 50 people. And then for the beekeeping organization or the like the clubs and the associations, they can track some metrics. And also they don't have to field all the calls because your platform just connects people directly. Um, yeah. So yeah, I mean, what a great service you're providing, you're working on. And it sounds like you're continuing to gather feedback and improve and are there any new features that we should be looking forward to that are currently in development that um, maybe you'll be open to share with us or yeah. any big plans yeah yeah so the last couple of months the, the big push has been to improve that dashboard for associations and so creating a place where associations can see the data from swarms coming in in real time and are able to manage their members if they're looking to kind of curate a swarm list of approved uh, responders where they will where they're able to manage that um, and that was all based on feedback that I received from, from beekeepers as the service was growing. This was not something I thought about when I first built this. That's been one of the really interesting things for me about this project is it, it started the very simple idea um, of, of letting beekeepers know when a swarm is reported near them and doing that kind of geolocation system and has, and has grown into, into this more multifaceted project really with the end goal of, of collecting the largest database of swarms uh, in the U.S. and also using that data of course, in an, in an anonymous form for research, um, because there's, there's still so little we know about, about swarms. I, I was just reading uh, Dr. Seeley's Honeybee Democracy, and really this is like the number one work on, on, on bee swarm behavior, and still there's, there's so many gaps and things we don't know yet. Uh, and so I think that, that's an interesting thing I'm looking forward to. In the shorter term, something I'll be working on this winter is incorporating a logbook feature into the website. And so beekeepers who already are using the service to claim bee swarms in the area will then also be able to keep track of how those swarms do in their apiaries, right? So um, I already sell on the website. This is one of the ways that, that swarm is, is supported as a free service is through donations and through a small online store. And that's that's how we pay for this uh, as a free service for beekeepers and for the public. And this logbook will, will then be included sort of in digital form on the platform itself. So the beekeepers are then able to um, go on the phone and, and log data about their, swarm, about their swarm and about their hives how they're doing, right? Brew pattern, how the hive is growing, keep track of, of the hive growth that way. Mm -hmm. okay. And you mentioned the word anonymize. Top of mind for many members of the public and beekeepers is data privacy and how mm -hmm. information is handled. How does that work on your website? What What is collected and what is it used for? Yeah, so my goal is to collect only the data that's absolutely necessary 
Um, and then, so what that means is the beekeeper's name, that can be any name, um, the, an email, that can be whatever email they, they choose, and of course, an address is needed. But what I see a lot of beekeepers do is they, they choose not their home address, right? There's no need to do that, um, but picking their street or their city, right? Uh, and as long as that location that you pick when you choose, when you sign up, uh, you're able to be notified of swarms nearby, and, and that works perfectly. And that's really all the, all the data we collect. Uh, beekeepers can put in their phone number if they want to receive text notifications. But the, all the, the, those, email, the, those email addresses and those, those text, data, text phone numbers are only reused to send swarm reports. Um, and that's all, the only data that's needed from beekeepers. And so keeping that's all stored securely in the website and not shared with anyone and really has the benefit, and this is what I hear from a lot of associations too, is, or from a lot of individual beekeepers, is that it's nice not to have your phone number on a swarm list in public uh, just because of the sheer volume of spam that you get nowadays if you put your phone number out in public. Uh, and so another thing too is that your phone number when you sign up is only ever shared with the person who reported the swarm when you claim it. So if I see a, if a swarm comes into my neighborhood, uh, my data isn't shared with anyone until I hit that claim button. Um, and at that point, I see the phone number of the person who reported the form and they see my phone number so that we're able to connect. Since one of my goals too was not to micromanage this process. Um, and because there's always this sort of X factor, right? We, I think we've seen enough swarms, right? And you come across enough swarms that are all in different situations and, and it's impossible to convey everything in a simple form. And so at the end of the day, it's important that the beekeeper is able to connect to the homeowner and have a quick phone call or a quick text exchange, right? Can I get into the picture um, or whatever else, right? Answer any questions they need to know, scheduling, when they can come by. Of course, a lot of homeowners don't know what they're dealing with or what they have on their hands. And so explaining how bee swarm will be dealt, right? How, how we're gonna deal with this bee swarm. These are all important sort of X factors. And so making sure that the beekeeper and the person who reported this, this swarm have this one-on-one -on -one connection uh, where they're able to figure out those, those last details and then carry through a successful uh, recovery. Yeah, so it sounds like you gathered just a minimal amount of information to help connect people. Um, so some type of contact information and then the minimal amount of geo uh, location information so people can be connected in a geographic region. And then also you give, you don't like share it publicly, you only share in very targeted yeah, ways. So, mm -hmm. wow, great, thank you. Um, yeah, what a great service that you've worked on developing and. Uh, how did the idea get started? Is there like a, a fun backstory or have you, I mean, this idea, as you shared with me, and I, I've heard many times as manager of California Master People Program, many people have had this idea of this website, but you've taken it the furthest, at least that I have seen um, in the US. And so, yeah, what, what inspired you? Yeah, really spending my spring um, refreshing my Facebook feed, my next door feed, and seeing posts about swarms and seeing them two hours late, right, or three hours late. And by that point, the bees have moved on, or the fire department has been called, or the police have been called, um, which happens more often than you think. And I, I hear from people all the time that the, this is what, they, what they've what they done before, um, because they weren't sure who to, con who to contact. And of course, that, that's, that's a shame to be using emergency services for that, since they're not meant to be used for that. Um, and so we're seeing all these ways where, where I was having a tough time finding swarms. Um, and it wasn't a part of, a, of an association at the time. And so it seemed like a, there, there was this potential to do this in a faster, better way. And I had some time on my hands. I just finished working for a beekeeping startup. And so it was thinking in my head too about what other useful tool could I build? Um, because I think beekeepers are a really interesting group of people to, to work with. Um, and, and I've been working with beekeepers for the past five years now. Um, and really wanted to build something useful for that community and build something useful for myself. And, and this seems like a tool I've been wanting to use since I got building. Well, we thank you for your service and are thankful <laughs> that you had extra time on your hand uh, to to develop this. And uh, members of the camp are very thankful. And um, so, so we appreciate that. And so if someone wants to go to the website, what is the URL? We'll also put that in the description. Yeah, so the URL is beeswarmed.org. Uh, and if you scroll to the bottom of the website in the footer, there's a link to the partnerships page where associations can find out more about partnering. Um, anyone who has questions is welcome to email me. My email is mateo at beeswarmed.org. Uh, I'm always happy to answer any questions or arrange meetings with, with associations who are, who are interested in learning more or even individual beekeepers who want to learn more. Thank you for your time, Mateo. Yeah. Great talking to you, Keon. Have a good one. You too. As always, we appreciate feedback. Uh, we have a link in the description of the YouTube video. 
Uh, anything you'd like to share about the program, anything you'd like to see, anything you've learned is interesting, feel free to share with us in that link. And with yeah. that, thank you for your time and hope to see you next time. Be well, everyone. Be well. Thank you.